How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, time to get that imagination all cranked up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Mu Pen. If you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. Uh, He's a lovely, wonderful artist. Uh, I'm blown away by his work. I feel like he's got a very uh, unique style and sensibilities. Uh, I, I almost have to, uh, we gotta really blow this up and, and check out just how intricate um, his work is. It almost feels like if Martin Hanford, who did the like Where's Waldo series, was really into high illustration and kind of j uh, Japanese sensibilities or culture. Just the amount of detail he throws into each and every one of his pieces just is remarkable. Uh, let's, 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 let's zoom in and, and just see each one of these characters and just how beautiful and, and the composition for how he loads these all through. There's just so much you could do. I, we, could, we could dissect you know each one of these pieces for hours and hours and hours and just the the whimsical and, and fantastically imaginative uh, vision that he has to, to make these images come to life is, is just phenomenal. I mean, you have these like uh, Norwals and dolphins and sharks fighting this giant sea monster, which is crashing, crashing over his giant ship. And then you have, I'm guessing this is a, a mermaid creature here. And each one of these guys is, is intricately detailed with their own costumes and their own unique poses and, and everything just the amount of detail that goes into one of these is, is phenomenal and, and the color is, is beautiful and just just wonderful pieces i mean look at the amount of detail that he throws in here there's another cool one that i want to do uh kind of get in this one i really like too these it's like uh frog toad men that he has is such a vivid imagination i, I love his stuff i mean look at the expressions on this character We've got just this alone, you know, if we just dove in, and I realize it's a, it gets a little blurry just from the size that I have of this, but the real images are huge. Um, like, the, the amount of detail it would go just in laying this out and getting all these characters right and everything, and then that's just, what, like, a, a tenth of this image with the amount of information that's in here in detail? It's wonderful, wonderful stuff. I urge you guys to check out more stuff um, from Mupon. Uh, phenomenal artist. And just gorgeous, gorgeous work. Is this the one that I liked? I think so. Let's see. Uh, yeah, this is the one that, that um, I want to talk a little bit more about. It's so cool. It's like a vision of the early uh, Native American, almost probably right before the Civil War um, period. I think this is the like Little Bighorn. I could be mistaken here. Um, but that's so cool. I, I love when uh, I don't think the Native American culture gets brought into too much uh, art styles these days or that kind of cowboys versus Indians um, meme or mentality that uh, our culture that was around um, quite a, a long time ago um, even up till you know like 50s and 60s that was still a big portion you know with like John Wayne and all that kind of stuff that was going on with that uh, and it's got a bunch of different things in it now so I guess it'd be harder to do that but I love seeing that work and the amount of detail that he just throws in here is just wonderful and then he always throws like one big giant creature which really kind of mixes stuff up I mean think of the size you got these little Indians riding on this giant bear it's so such a wonderful idea I love his imagination like I said I, I urge you guys to check out more stuff from him I think he is definitely one of those people that um, even if maybe necessarily uh, stylistically I might uh, choose to go in a little bit different direction just personally I think he he's one of those artists that you go there's I can't really compare him to anyone else that's out there and I think that's um, a great goal to have to be unique and wonderful in the world and, and make it so that no matter you know uh, oh I really like this style of art or I really like this style of art or I still really like this style you know it, style is secondary but what do you bring to the table that's your own imagination and your own unique voice and i think he does that marvelous marvelously and wonderfully um i did want to share a uh, quote that i was able to uh, find from him and uh i thought this one was was wonderful I, there were some other ones that i went with or could have gone with but i, I really liked this one because he said it's okay i can always make a better piece next time i'm not attached to whatever i make and look at his gorgeous work i mean the fact that he can 
put this much effort and this much time um, into each one of these shots and then still try and uh, you know not be attached to it that's that's a big feat I know um something that I definitely uh, try to work on is try to put you know your heart and soul and your time and your effort and your uh, patience and your knowledge into a piece of work and then to also at the same time have that kind of uh, bipolarness of your work in that you're so want to spend that time to love and to put that um, energy into a piece and then also be able to just be like but I'm not attached to it people don't like it but that's okay if you know just that whole mentality of being able to separate yourself from your work but at the same time throw yourself into it is a difficult thing to do and I think uh, it's probably I, I was reading another story about him where he took like a knife and sliced up some of his canvases and stuff too so I think you know there's there's that little bit of dichotomy too is you, you know that that's hard to to do sometimes and I also liked what he said was you can always make a better piece next time and I think that's a great mentality to have it kind of uh, butters up against the you know you're only as good as your last thing that you've done which uh, can be a good motivator I think sometimes but also um, be difficult pill to swallow but I'm getting a little rambly so let's go ahead and get into some animation like I said I really urge you guys to check out his work I really hadn't seen much of his stuff until the last week or so and as I have I just uh, I'm enamored with it I think it's it's phenomenal stuff um, if you're not familiar with what we're gonna be doing we're continuing on with this skirmish animation I know I keep saying I'm gonna do an offshoot on it but I keep uh, I'll watch it when I'm see how it's going from yesterday and I'll be like well I gotta fix that then we can move on to the next thing so maybe we'll get to a stage where we're like right on our uh, polishing passes and we'll do a break and then go back into it maybe something like that but we're using the goon rig from the how to cheat in Maya series I'll throw a link in the description down below along with all the stuff that we've talked about um, so far and we're also using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and play do a play blast and see where we're at here um, with everything and see what we want to attack for today I think we want to just work towards the end we kind of work through uh, the run and this I also wanted to do something too where I wanted to have maybe because I, I think there's this acting bit on the run in is fine but it's kind of kind of bland like I think it would be more interesting if we threw the sword like on his side and had him pull it out in the middle of the run I thought that would be a little more interesting um, it might give us kind of an acting moment to go through there I feel like the other character during the run he's got enough going on with holding that hammer that I don't feel like there needs to be anything else there but this character on the left here um, it, it just can get a little repetitive through there so I thought one thing that would be fun to mix that up is to have him maybe start off with kind of a uh, a boxing kind of a mentality at the beginning and then as he's running in he pulls the sword out and goes and that would also give us a chance to um, play with uh, we can approach it in a couple different ways but um, let's do a play blast see where we're at and see what we want to attack here so I'm just gonna pause the broadcast real quick while we do a play blast and we'll be right all right so here we go um, yeah I think I, I want to do that um, for today I definitely need to break down um, pretty much the last 40 frames a lot more but I think I want to take a break from kind of doing that movement and uh, play around with that idea because I think um, I think the, the run in just to me is a little little dull uh, could be have a little more acting in there and that way we'd have an acting beat during that run which I think would help us a little bit more so let's see if we can we can do that um, here together and that now what I was kind of talking about in the beginning is there's a couple different ways that we could approach this and I like to kind of talk through stuff with you guys too to, to well, a maybe uh, let myself think through what I want to do and also um, give you guys a couple different options for if you wanted to try this so what we could do is we could um, parent the sword to the hip and turn off the parent to the hand and then at let's say around 28 then we'd switch the parent to off on the hip and onto the hand and we could try that or we could create um, two different swords and then turn the visibility off on the sword that would be connected to the hip 
when we want to turn it on to the hand. And I think that might be an easier way, especially if we were going and wanted to retime everything. Um, so let's try that way first. If that doesn't work, we'll go to more, I guess, would be the correct way to do it. But uh, I don't really want to mess with the parenting too much on this hand. I'd rather have it just be a visibility thing where you wouldn't see it. Um, again, that's probably a cheat, but uh, I think that might. So what we do is we turn the visibility to off on this. And let's say we go to about uh, 38 and then turn it to on. Okay. And again, we'd have it turned off here and have it flick on. And the other thing we want to do is we're going to grab this. Copy that and paste another one. Uh, hold on. Um, one second here. Okay, we got it. Uh, for some reason, it just wasn't selecting. So we just did a copy paste. And now, what we want to do with this one is turn the visibility. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and we'll use this one here. Take this. getting a little bit of uh, error stuff coming up so I reopened the file didn't want to keep with anything there so let's see if we can still get this to go here because when I'm pasting it now it's giving me a, a duplicate of all the constraints so try and figure out a workaround here so again we'll turn the visibility here off We'll have it up, so we'll turn that on, and again we'll look at the visibility here. So we'll try to just work without it for right now. Get that set up, and then we'll look at the constraints here in a minute because I want to at least be able to do something here with it, and I don't think we're quite there yet. So just we'll do some workarounds for right now. Fist here, the thumb over, bring that up. So we'll get the idea working and then we'll get the prop working a little bit here. And just see if we like it better before we spend all that time trying to get the uh, prop to work correctly. What I might end up having to do is just a workaround where uh, I open a separate version of the file and uh, save off the prop in another one and then import another version of the prop in might be a way that we can work around here. So sometimes if I'm kind of, I wouldn't say stumped, but kind of coming up against a, uh, a brick wall and I want to think through it, but I still want to do some work, I'll move on to something else and then come back to that part of the idea. So um, again, let's kind of go with all of that. We'll keep our uh, list more in this shape here. Eventually we'll get to where we have it at about what's that, 15. So I'll delete everything in between there. And we'll go probably about 30. And we'll rotate that over here.
two, but we have about 24. We'll get it up to five. And now let's widen that movement a little bit more. Set right here at about 10, so we have a few more frames to get there. Set that a couple frames sooner. quite so soon. So maybe not even hit that quite there yet. Still on a nice arc there and a good bit of weight. to worry about how the other arms go in there. I think that idea works a little better. So now we're going to need to tweak this hand. And let's go here. So we don't go quite out of that so fast. And we'll hit that one. Set that over there. Keep this hand pose there for a few more frames. Yeah, let's get that hand out so that it would be able to cup around there. So we'll go for about there. Go ahead and delete this. Get all of this out a little bit more. And again, we'll probably go something more like this. Get those fingers working and looking a little bit nicer. Get a little jank there. Here we'd want to go 
this everything here for a little bit longer. So we'll probably till about 42. Exaggerate that we're going to be picking it up. Maybe we'll even a little back here. So again, we'll set that one. We'll date that. Just so we can exaggerate that we're going to be going to pick it up. And here to maybe go up a little bit more, maybe drag it back, drag that back a little bit more, and same here. Let's do just a quick little play blast and just see how that feels. Again, we'll have to get the other arm kind of out of the way. Uh, so we'll do a quick play blast and just see kind of how the timing's working if that uh, play. Okay, I think we could probably still have a few more frames um, just to get that sword up in the air. Let's get the visibility on and get everything working probably about three frames sooner um, on everything. But I think that idea is a little bit better. Adds a little more intrigue um, to his run. But I think it's pretty close. So I wanted to do a few more frames. So we'd be doing hitting this, or rather, let's say about 10. so that we can get it up faster. And again, uh, let's get the visibility on probably about at 20. further over and we'll have to pull, polish that up a little bit more so we we'll need to move that arm over a little bit more give a little more bend here further down and over and then a little bit further back. So right now it's kind of Felix the Cat magical bag of tricksing out of there. So I'll have to get um, everything else working better in a second. But let's make sure that we go back to 20. We set that. I think we'll still need this to be dragging backwards. It's not up as high yet. So something more like that. This could probably still have a little bit more drag to it. And maybe a little, a little bit more of an angle. We want to still be able to see it.
All right, let's do another play blast and see how that feels if the timing doesn't flash so much. All right, it's okay, but I think we can do a better arc to get it up there. As you see, it kind of just hits there and then goes through. I think we could swing it all the way up and then back. I think that would be read a little better. So let's try that. So what I'm talking about is from right here, we've got this movement that goes here. I think this should actually be more like about like that. Maybe we still want a little bit of drag to it. This would go out here. So we get that arc working in our favor a little bit more. Okay, we want to swing it up there. Just so it reads a little bit better. This would probably be a little bit more upward. This would be a little more out. Still want to try and keep that arc of the blade going though. Let's get it again just out further. sweeping arc to pull it out. Okay, I think that works better and shouldn't read as too much flashing, so let's do another play blast and see how it feels. Alright, I think that's a lot more intriguing of a run. We've got a little bit of an acting moment there. Um, so we just gotta get our uh, parenting and our uh, prop working a little bit better here. So I think, um, I think I'm not going to worry about that right now. Maybe I'll even do that off stream just because I think it would be kind of, I don't know if it would be the best video here. Um, so we'll, we'll work on a different part of our shot right now and uh, I'll work through a couple different methods of what I think would be the best way to do that. Um, but I think the idea works and I think we got it working better. Just got to get that um, prop, so I'll have to open another version, save that off, bring it back in, and I don't know that would um, uh, be for the, the best watching experience. So let me know, comments down below, if you uh, uh, want to see that or want me to talk through the process a little bit more, that's fine. But uh, I think we'll get back into just sticking with um, some animation for right now. So let's take a, a break from that idea and look more towards the end of the scene here. So I think we kind of got to about this point where we were at yesterday, where we kind of left off right around frame 90 or so. So let's work on doing a few more frames towards the end here. So I'll go about, attack about 30 frames of this thing. Uh, I'm going to save an alternate version here since I think that beginning works a little bit better. And we'll be right Okay, so what we'll kind of hit up then, I think we could probably still break down, is just going to be this fall over. I think it doesn't quite work just yet for how I'd like it to. It's a little rough and a little bit, like you see, just certain parts being animated and certain parts holding. It doesn't blend quite well. Um, so let's try and polish that off a little bit more. Let's turn the 
got the feet showing right now. So let's make sure we do that. I think there's a little bit too much Y here. Not enough of an arc here, so maybe we'll go a little bit lower there. So we can still get a little bit better of an arc on that foot falling over. And also I think when it falls, I want that knee to really hit the ground here too, so that should hit. here. Just so we still have a little bit of movement through there. Now let's try and blend uh, these the hips a little bit better. So let's look at just the overall movement of the hips. out some of these arcs a little bit better. And it should go still a little bit further downward, so maybe we'll lift that one up just so we have a little bit of movement, don't completely lock off there. So let's just grab everything, the hips and the chest here. And I want it to be there. I feel like that works, but let's delete this one. Actually, let's keep that there. And delete this one. Just so we have a little bit of movement there. Look at this foot. This foot's a little broken here. So we'll go ahead and leave it there. And we'll try and get into that position a little bit more, a little bit sooner here, too. So let's do ourselves a little more uh, rotate. We'll just do Y and Z here. a little better. <laughs> All right, let's see how that feels, if that feels a little better. All right, it's a little bit better. Still think we probably could retime a lot of this stuff too. Uh, probably have a lot of switches and stuff. Okay, 
It's a little bit better though. Now let's look at this shoulder here. I feel like that one's maybe a little too pushed. Keep that a little bit more up here. Let's delete that line. Still want a little bit of movement in there. Let's take it a little bit more. It might be easier to flip this over into. Uh, IK instead too, just so we can get that to land on the ground. I think we'll go ahead and do that. Switch it over to IK here. this one around because that's not a great hand pose here get that elbow that a little bit better. I think it's the right way to go though rather than trying to get it to feel like it planted on the ground here. Keep this IK working until probably about here, even. Okay, uh, so let's get that IK weight. 
turned off there, so we got that flip. even drop the sword too that might be cool so let's actually turn it off here up with the last one but rather let's kind of look at how that arc works here We make sure it's off there and on there. Put that over. down a little bit more. Cute there, cute there, cute there. I'm gonna delete that and delete that one. Maybe a little bit more of this. Is that going? There's still some sort of a change here. So we got everything cued there. And then just hold that till I'm ready and ready. So this shouldn't well shouldn't move ideally. Why is that sword going? sword itself. Okay. That could be why. So let's make sure that we keep that key until I'm ready and ready. Because we want that to be flat on the ground. That's the main reason why we're doing that. maybe that's got a problem what's going on here uh, let's see no locator doesn't seem to be having anything there is it the shoulder that's causing it it's simply the shoulder alone that will do it nope where's 
still getting that. There, one second here. All right, we just have to go in and key it on ones, but I think that'll work a little bit better. So now we'll get that weight of that sword really hitting down here. So let's see. all for a few more frames. So we'll grab everything again. Get our hand controller there. Just make sure we're keeping it in that space. And we'll hold it till about 101. to the shoulder, is that what's doing it? There's something else that's affecting that, which is kind of a bummer, but that's okay. So maybe we'll just do a little bit here, and we'll go ahead and drag that in the tip of the sword a little bit here. here up a little bit maybe we'll even knuckle it down so we're resting on the knuckle here definitely something funky with our parenting but we're not going to worry about that too much here that a little bit more so it's out further again bring that down I have to bring this up a little bit I don't think we got exactly where we should have set up that parenting but that's okay Six. Everything will want it to hit about one oh five. Okay, again, let's check and make sure. this alone here. I think it's probably all of this stuff here. I 
actually want it there, but let's take what we have at, let's say, 101, set that, hold that to 108, and delete all the stuff in the middle, see if that helps us a little bit more. Okay, that way we actually have what we want now, we can just offset it there. So, for some reason, all the rest of the arm controllers were bugging us for all this, which is kind of a little bit of a bother here for how we want to get this working. I guess we'll just work around, find a good workaround for it. up a little bit more. That elbow out here. We'll get this wrist. this all in ones, I guess, but that's okay. Okay, just keep polishing this up. And this is why constraints and switching between uh, IK and FK isn't always as fun, because you have to do a lot of uh, stuff that's pretty tight there. So again, we'll hold all that till let's go to 103. Maybe to 104 or 102. stuff but going on here again. Hold that all till 102. Okay, because we want to keep that flat on the ground. I mean, that's the main reason why we did that. So we're getting there. I feel like that's a fairly strong pose. And that works. Now we gotta break up how this body's gonna work. So we forgot that it gets to 106, but I think we could probably have that be one frame later. And then we just hold for too long now. one more frame there. And then we'll need to keep 
this on the ground one more frame longer. So let's again go ahead and grab everything here and hold that for one more frame. So we can help that weight shift work a little better. And let's see how that blends into what are we looking at? 115. So we're going to need I guess we could hit that one but we need to wait this one I do want that IK weight to shift a little better but I'm going to have to go ahead and show how we got off there a little bit better Actually, let's keep it on the ground one more frame and we can kind of carve that up a little bit better. So we got that. Let's hold it to 110. Okay, now it is touching there, so we're going to have to... going there and then we'll let this go back to zero here and then we'll carve that one in there all right and we might need one more um, key in between there so we could have what we have at like 108 just some sort of a move in between there. Actually, let's keep that. We'll just raise it up a little bit higher. And a little bit over. And make sure that the tip of the sword is holding there. sure that we've got everything there keyed at 108 and then again at 110 and we're gonna grab 109 and we're just gonna pop that key in a little bit better here okay now we need to make sure that we get this key working a little bit better here too. This would probably still be dragging a little bit. see how the overall arc works there. This should still be down more, over, down, like that. And maybe a little more up overall, and a little more over, back. the elbow here a little bit more. Yeah, leave that. Yeah, let's 
it's a little too broken, so I'll have to let it start somewhere. Okay, I think we're going to need to, because this is the next key we got, and I like that. So I think we need to just find a better key in here. So let's delete this. Trying to look at the overall arc of this movement so it reads a little better. I should maybe be a little illustrator. Okay, so let's grab let's set everything there. Set everything there. Maybe we'll delete this one. All right, let's um play that through, and I think we're hitting about our time here together today. So let's uh, play blast it and see how it looks. All right, it's a lot better. It still needs some more cleanup, and I feel like there's a little bit of flash in the sword when it moves that I don't like. I wish it would be on the ground a little bit more. Um, so uh, let's try and clean that up. And you see when it falls, the sword's flat against the ground, and then it kind of flashes up real quick. So it doesn't really read with the speed that it's going at. Um, so let's try and clean that up. See, like, in there. It just flashes too quick. Keep that a little flatter to the ground. Maybe we'll try to get one more break down in there. a little better at least it doesn't raise up and flash still think that that might be too much so let's um do another play blast and see okay that's lots better it's not flashing so much you can still see that there's another resettle on there but it's not flashing up and slapping down which is causing the eye to go there instead Okay, so we kept that sense of weight. I think it's a little bit heavier when he flops down. I think we could still give ourselves probably about four more frames in there to read everything. Um, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the, the larger shot as a whole together with uh, the changes we did today and uh, wrap it up here. So we'll do one more play blast of everything and... Uh, Okay, yeah, I think overall I might need to do some more retiming on everything, which is going to definitely mess stuff up a little bit for all those uh, IKFK switches and stuff. But uh, I think, well, overall it'll be a better option. The ending's just a little too, 
too quick. There needs to be some some staccato or uh, some variation, rather, in our not staccato, the opposite of that. Um, just some variation in our timing to add a little more texture to that because I feel like the last moves just go pretty quickly with a pretty close to the same beats. The beginning has a little bit better timed out um, speed to it and everything. So it's definitely something we need to do. Uh, I need to get that parenting working a little bit better um, for getting that sword out so that we can have it uh, hooked onto the hip. Um, but it was giving us a little bit of trouble. I think it's just how I modeled it. It wasn't uh, probably the correct way if I wanted to copy it or whatever. So I'll, I'll open up another file and maybe we'll do that together. I don't know if it'll translate well to video or not. Um, but yeah, let's take a look back at where we started. Again, it's it's getting there. It's a lot, a lot more breakdowns, a lot more uh, with the important information that we need in order to get this stuff done. It's just, it's not quite there yet. We still got a lot, a lot to do. Um, before we're we're done, but we're getting a lot of that that bulk information there. So uh, we're looking at the beautiful work of Mupon, and I said it's okay. I can always make a better piece next time. I'm not attached to whatever I make. I think it's a great, great mentality to have to always be looking forward to what your next project is and knowing that you can learn and grow from what your previous one is or the one you're currently working on, and uh, to not get too attached to anything and to always just look for. Um, how you can get better and how you can improve and uh, take those criticisms and those critiques to heart and uh, try and share um, you know it's kind of something that that I try to do too is to um, look at other people's work and find the things that you love about it and the things that uh, you think that that you could maybe improve upon or uh, offer suggestions for it too but always do that in a kind and compassionate manner too I think it it, it works a little bit better people are are happy to to grow um, but I don't think people feel like they want to get attacked either, so you have to kind of look at that um, as well. Um, so yeah, I love you guys lots. Thanks for hanging out with me. I know this one was a, a little bit different, um, but they're all they're all going to be these different. Uh, while we're going through a long shot like this, you know, we never know quite uh, what we're going to expect and what problems we're going to come into and what uh, things we need to overcome in any sort of shot. You know, you uh, create your own problems in your own scenes so you just got to fight figure out good ways to work through them um, so thanks for hanging out with me thanks for all the likes and subscribes you guys are, are amazing I'm trying to go through and, and at least um, check out at least one of each one of yours one of you wonderful subscribers um, I gotta come up with a name for for our little group here together if you got any ideas comments down below um, I try to go through and, and at least uh, check out and give you guys a thumbs up on one of your videos uh, and give you some encouragement. I hope that you're taking another step in your journey towards mastering whatever medium it is that you're passionate about, that you carve out a section of your day to day to do that. And uh, I'm getting rambly, so we'll wrap it up and uh, we will see you for some more animation, some more imagination, some more creativity tomorrow.